great unknown, the mysterious. This is Mysterialis. In this episode, you're going to see an experiment that I'm conducting concerning ghosts. Hunting ghosts is something I'm not particularly an expert at, but A poltergeist, noisy ghost, a ghost that can move objects, is something that I have experienced firsthand. It happened in the year primarily 2011. For five and a half months, every single day, a poltergeist moved objects in my room while I was wide awake. I'm going to conduct my first ghost experiment in the corner of my room. Now, why the corner of my room? Because for five and a half months straight, this entity, or perhaps two entities or more, entered my room in the corner of my room. It's a pattern I kind of noticed. This isn't a psychological thing, you see. This is a repeatable pattern that has happened many times. I have not researched the subject until after the fact, until after it happened to me. I never conducted any occult experiments or read any occult books. I never purchased or read a single occult book up to this point when this entity was harassing me in 2011. So some people might have said I invited it with a Ouija board or invited it with a book, but Ouija boards do work sometimes. I would say they don't work most of the time, but on a rare occasion they do work. I avoid them like the plague. But I am conducting the first experiment tonight in the corner of my room, not on top of this snowy mountain, but in the corner of my room, where I believe there has been activity from time to time. Not as much as in 2011, but activity nonetheless. I've purchased an array of ghost hunting devices. I built a shelf for them to sit in, and let's watch now and see what happens. I have not conducted the experiment yet, so I have no idea what's going to happen. I'm going to conduct at least 10 experiments. This is experiment number one. I do not recommend this experiment in any way, shape, or form. I thank you for watching. This has been John Rasmus. Corners of Rooms is an authentic phenomenon involving spirits using that angle, almost like the shape of a pyramid, those intersecting walls. It's like sacred geometry to spirits for some reason or another. The corner of the room of a structure made by man is all a spirit needs as a portal to enter your room. They don't need it, but they use it habitually. They're addicted, they're attracted to it. They can't not want to use certain portals. There are different portals beyond corners of rooms, but corners of rooms is my theory concerning an obscure type of portal, which really when you add up all the evidence is not that obscure. It's just people haven't noticed the pattern. The reason I noticed the pattern of this extremely obscure occult subject concerning corners of rooms I'm not an occultist. I've never read a single occult book back in the year 2011. I was just minding my own business. I moved into a room that happened to be poltergeist haunted. This entity was territorial of a specific corner in my room. So I didn't even attempt to experiment with it. It was accidental experimentation of me just having objects over there. They always got knocked down until I moved everything out of that corner of the room. 
The green screen near the corner of my room was yanked down violently. It was yanked down. I saw it yanked. I saw the tax fly out, the oversized tax. So I made new holes, pinned it properly, only to see about a minute later, I saw it really closely the second time, yanked down. This is how they were yanked down, and I've never revealed this. I got to see the bottom of the green sheet, and it looked like it was stepped on. It looked like it was, the, the entity jumped up and stepped on the green sheets on the bottom of the floor near the corner of the room, and that's how the sheet was yanked down, both times. I started to notice, hey, 165 days in a row, if I put anything near that corner, it gets pushed out of the corner, as if this is my corner, very territorial, invisible entity. Whether you believe that or not, it actually happened. This experiment is a culmination of those events in 2011. I placed this device in the corner of my room to prove my corners of rooms theory. But then again, my theory also encapsulates the fact that spirits are everywhere. There's nowhere you can go where spirits are not, which I say later on in this video. Negative spirits, demonic entities, they're not afraid of artificial light. Although there might be some truth to the fact that they love the dark. I'm not going to dispute that. Let me just show you how this device works. It's a very simple device. It's called a ghost pod. It has two buttons. One turns it on. You put your hand close to it. And the manipulation of the field around this antenna the magnetic field, the static electricity field, and these lights go off and the little speaker goes off. The other mode involves just changing the tone. That tone's a lot less, it's a lot less detailed than this tone, because this tone you can tell When it gets close, it makes an obvious sound. This one, I can confirm, is the only one that verifiably detected a spirit. I didn't believe in the contact of spirits, and I still don't, but being harassed for many years, called a liar by many people, anonymous cowards mostly, but I kind of feel the need to defend myself, even if it means to the extreme of buying a piece of equipment like this. This detects the static electricity on the antenna. Because of that, I purchased two static electricity locators. This is sort of proof that that device worked. Why would I go out and buy two professional grade static electricity locators for no reason? I'm not rich. I, can't, I couldn't even afford these things, but they were a decent price, discounted and used. And I thought I would pick them up for my future experiments. Here we have two professional static locators used in factories. This is the Autostat electrostatic locator model 224CL. And unfortunately I can't really use this in my corners of rooms experiment because you have to hold this button down. And it's a very hard button to hold down. I might try to modify it so the button is always pushed down but it's a very hard to push down button. A piece of tape wouldn't hold it. But luckily I got this. This is another piece of professional equipment, even more so, the ACL Model 300 electrostatic locator. I'm gonna be using this in future experiments. You just turn it on. Wow, you can see right now, it is flipping to the maximum. Wow, let me reset it and see what happens. That is interesting, so it was Detecting perhaps the static in the bag. I don't know, but that's just proof that the thing does work. I have tested it out and I'm going to be setting it up. You don't have to hold any buttons down. It works on a professional level. And I will be seeking out a few pieces of professional ghost detecting equipment and non ghost detecting equipment that just focuses on a professional level on the different waves and fields out there that ghosts do have the ability to manipulate. This may look like a toy, but it actually detects spirits. And 24 hours after I used this for the first time in an experiment, a negative spirit walked through me. That actually happened. This is a true story. Because of that, I have to offer an extreme warning. Don't buy this, don't use it. The reason I bought it and used it 
is because of my extreme poltergeist encounter in 2011. So I feel a little bit justified in using this, but I don't feel justified in advertising the use or promotion of any of anything like this. You don't want negative spirits following you home. You don't want negative spirits attracted to you. Trust me, I'm dead serious when I say don't, don't buy and don't use this stuff. It has come at a price, and that price is pretty great. When I try to go to sleep, a negative spirit walks through me. I talked about that later in this video. You will see. The events in ghost detecting experiment number one actually took place. Spirits are attracted to the corners of rooms. This experiment on the corners of rooms I'm conducting in this video with ghost detecting experiment number one is all related to the corners of rooms experience I had in the year 2011. Thank you for watching. I'm John Rasmus. This is experiment number one. Ghost experiment number one. I'm only going to be conducting a limited number of these experiments. I'm here to show and tell the ghost hunters out there, whether it's the famous ones on the show, ghost hunters, or ghost adventures, or if it's the ones who watch that show and mimic it, or just start their own thing and do their own thing. And I'm going to show you what time it is right now. I forgot to show my cell phone. It is 12.01 a.m. on March 4th, 2018. 12.01 a.m. I'm going to show this camera, showing this camera. Gonna show the GoPro. It is now 12:02 a.m. I started the experiment at 12 a.m. sharp in the context of turning on the cameras. Now I have to actually turn on the devices. I'm gonna have a disclaimer before I do so. Warning, do not try this at home or anywhere. This is not fun and games. Owning ghost hunting equipment can and will invite unwanted negative forces into your life. Stay safe and please don't attempt to contact spirits. I do not recommend or condone the contacting of spirits in no way, shape or form. There are certain devices I do not use and I'll tell you why I do not use them. I do not recommend or condone, yet I'm doing it. It's a limited time. I have never done this before. I've never attempted in any way, shape, or form to use ghost hunting equipment to detect ghosts or spirits or negative entities, positive entities. This array of ghost hunting detecting equipment, which cost me probably approximately $250, it's not as accurate as myself. I think many people out there have an ability to detect you know, this, having a creepy feeling, that probably means a negative entity is nearby. Or, wow, I feel positive, positive and uplifted. That's possibly a positive spirit being nearby. And then, I actually have the ability to detect spirits, believe it or not, to discern spirits. It's an actual spiritual gift that some people are born with. So I could detect positive, negative, neutral spirits. I can't tell you what their name is. I'm not a psychic. I'm not a medium. I can't tell you their backstory. I can't hear them. Luckily, I can't see them. Luckily, I can only feel an electrical energy that electrical energy, it's electrical, is the best way to describe, it's one way to describe it. It might not be the best, but spirits are energy. They give off energy, they are energy. And whether you know you're sensing a spirit or not, perhaps you have noticed something feels wrong and off and really creepy. That's what a negative spirit gives off. But I've noticed, you know, even negative spirits can almost disguise it. So be wary, don't try to contact spirits. 
A few times people have asked me, oh, how do I contact my guardian angel? I just want to have contact with a positive being of guardian angel, pure love. I do not recommend it. These entities are invisible. And because they're invisible, there's no way to know what you're contacting. Um, I don't use Ouija boards. I don't use apps on your phone. I don't use ghost pumps, which are batteries designed to give energy from the battery to a spirit. I don't use direct communication. I don't have full-blown conversations in real time. I'm hesitant about using EVP devices and right here and right here there are supposed to be recorders. I purchased this Pi diode and I did test it out and it does work. Uh, but unfortunately I'm using one of my recorders for my mic on my lapel right now so I'm unable to use this in the current experiment because the other recorder I ordered for an EVP using this has not arrived yet. 10 is likely the top number of experiments I'm going to be conducting. If anything happens I will do a live stream to show you nothing is being tricked, no trickery is taking place. Perhaps nothing will happen, perhaps something will happen. I greatly built this set with the singular purpose of focusing on the corner of the room. I built and designed and painted this cube for the sole purpose of being the prop to hold up this custom made display and uh, I was going to take it apart to show you there's no trickery, there's no gimmicks built inside of it. It is simply plastic that I hot glued together and I duct taped it with white duct tape and black duct tape. Six devices were turned on, objects were placed around the devices, four aluminum coins and a foam pyramid. Due to time restraints, this is the GoPro angle sped up turn on and setup process. I was unable to use the EVP speaker or recorder due to the fact that the recorders never arrived, so I'm still searching for one. This is simply the setup process where I turn on every device, and I, we later find out two of the devices turned off on their own. And here is the key device. I tested it out. I have all the original footage. I set up the aluminum coins, which are very delicate, on purpose, delicately balanced. And during the setup process, I knocked them over. So I had to reset them up. But their location is proof that nothing changed as it's virtually impossible to put them back in the same place twice. But I assure you, zero trickery took place. These are the devices simply in this plastic container. At the end of the video, you will see me disassemble and dismantle the entire thing. This is sped up simply for time restraint purposes. Let's start the official actual experiment. Everything is in place. It is 12.25 a.m. 12.25 a.m. All right. So let's start with a story I've never told before, ever. No one has heard this story because I've purposely held this story back. It's a demonic dream I had on, I almost have to double check. I know for a fact I tweeted about it. I'll read the tweet just to get the ball rolling. Had a weird dream yesterday, a demonic dream, scary stuff. When in the dream, there's an attack with a weight. And out of the dream, the same pressure is still there. 
It's demonic. This wasn't sleep paralysis. It was a weight on my chest. We'll talk about it with ghost meters on in the future. Today is the future, and these are the ghost meters. Most of them are on. So let me tell the story I've never told before, ever. It must have been January 20th at 1.30 p.m. Now why do I remember it being 1.30 p.m.? Because I slept in, or I was taking a nap. And I remember the second I woke up, as soon as I can get this weight of a demonic entity off of my chest, and it didn't take too long, as soon as I got the weight of this demonic entity off my chest, I checked my phone, and it was 1.30 p.m. exactly. So you can be attacked by a demon in broad daylight, 1.30 p.m. in the afternoon. And that's what happened to me. I took a nap, and when you're in a sleep-like state, sure, you're more conducive to sleep paralysis taking place, which scientists are going to say is just part of the body shutting down the movement so you don't walk in your sleep. And I fully agree with that being part of the body. It's a very useful mechanism. I wouldn't want to act out every one of my dreams. But anyone who has studied the metaphysical state of changing the vibration and frequency of your mind knows that strange things happen to your mind. Strange things happen to your perceptive abilities during the gamma theta state. That's when you're in REM-like sleep, during trance-like states. Take it or leave it. I can't convince everybody, but this actually happened. So in the dream, and it was a very lucid dream. It was full-blown color. This is what I remember. There was a person in a room, which was clearly a bedroom. It wasn't my bedroom, it was a bedroom. I didn't really recognize it. And the person was sitting on the floor and they were just wearing regular clothes, but their face was shifting. Their face was shifting kind of like a glitched out TV and their face was actually when it focused I recognized it as a face and I even recognized what face that was it almost seemed like if this was a demon he was trying to put on a face that I recognized and his face was shifting and it was never fully clear it was never fully on the rest of the body was normal but the face wasn't quite done. It's almost like a video game face, not completed. Then they disappeared. I walk through the room. There's a bed and there's nothing else in the room pretty much. No furniture, just a bed. So I sit on the bed and I look around like where did they go? And I look up and I see actually in the corner of the room of all things, I see in the corner of the room really nice elaborate wood holding up the plaster walls was cherry wood stained, really dark and really elaborate and high quality like you would see in a cabin. And then I noticed a banner coming down from the support beams. And the support beam was like an, in a, a Y shape, but this burgundy banner came down and it was gold trimmed I think there was a design in the middle, just a decorative design in the middle and gold trimmed and very long. The walls were vaulted and I'm probably thinking, where is this person with the shape-shifting face? And then I see the banner move by itself and it's moving in elaborate shapes and I know an entity is moving it. So at that point, I was kind of freaked out. I knew it was like a poltergeist-themed dream. And trust me, I have not had probably hardly any poltergeist-themed dreams. Uh, believe it or not, uh, I would say 99% of my poltergeist encounters were not dreams and had nothing to do with any figments of any imagination, but they actually happened. In the year 2011, I rented a room I found on Craigslist. I think it was $400 a month. I've told this story many, many, many times. But perhaps this information is for 
the ghost detecting meters. So in the dream, this banner's moving around. It starts to freak me out a little bit. That's where the entity went. That's where this person went with the shape-shifting face. It was a demon, and they kind of tried to show me their, their true form, but they didn't show me their form. They covered their face with someone else's face because I recognized that person's face. I'm not going to mention who that person is. It really doesn't matter to the story. So this banner is moving around by itself, freaking me out. And then the banner pushes against my chest. And this is the first time in my life I've ever had a demonic dream that was particularly over the top, extremely scary in the dream. And then when I woke up, it was still scary outside of the dream. It wasn't sleep paralysis because I was fully wide awake. So this is what happened. This is how I know it was a demonic dream. The banner pushes against my chest and then I feel an actual weight on my chest in real life. I feel it. It feels like an actual person got on top of me. Matter of fact, a very familiar feeling since I felt a demon jump on my chest before. It's not the first time. It doesn't happen all the time. It's actually a very rare instance. In the dream, the banner pretty much fades away and it's just this invisible demon pushing me. And the demon, fully invisible in the dream, pushes me with its full force against the wall. It actually pushes me a good 10, 15 feet to the other corner of the room. So it pushes me from one corner of the room to the exact other corner of the room. And it freaks me out. I'm like trapped and pushed against an, an invisible entity in the dream. So you might say, oh, it's just a dream. Don't worry about it. It's just a, just a nightmare. So I feel a weight, you know, and I'm trapped. So my instinct is to wake up out of the dream. When the dream was over and I'm fully wide awake and I can move, there's no sleep paralysis taking place. There's still a weight of a legitimate entity on my chest. And when I woke up, I was like, I could move, but I could feel the entity. And only after I like willed it to get off of me, did it finally realize, I guess, oh, this person's awake. Maybe I should stop this uh, weight on his chest feeling. So that happened. Actual demonic attack. Uh, pretty freaky stuff actually happened. True story. We can see that it is... 12.38 a.m., 12.39 a.m., and not a single one of these meters has really gone off, you have to admit. Twelve thirty-eight. Twelve thirty-eight. So the thing's keeping a low profile for test number one. Low profile. You know, I would ask it perhaps to turn on the meters or manipulate the meters in any way, shape, or form to be shown and seen by the camera. But the fact is, I don't want any direct communication. I don't do direct communication with the spirits. I'm not going to ask it to do anything because it's against my personal belief of no real-time communication. Although the setup in and of itself is sort of a gray area of asking it, right? So you have to admit there is some asking of it to manipulate these meters to a certain extent. Let's have a water break real quick. pretty hot. I have these lights on without the fan because I didn't want the fans noise to distract from anything. EVPs, electronic voice phenomena. I'm hesitant about using that and I would have data to go through if I had a couple EVP devices up there, but I don't. But I do have 
all three of these cameras have a mic built in. So I will listen to this camera in particular. I have noticed knocks and touches on the mic so close that, he, that I know it's something touching the mic. It's not a defective mic, it's a brand new camera. And I know what the touching of a mic sounds like. For example, let me give you an example of touching of the mic. I'm going to be touching the mic real quick. Whoa! We have activity. We have a legitimate spirit legitimately turning on this device here. So this device actually works. This device actually works. We got it to work. It worked. Uh, I can't say that, uh, thanks for showing up, but at least I can say I didn't waste $250 purchasing these devices. Interesting that the electromagnetic, of all things, the annoying eh, buzzing device, which seems like a toy. Whoa! We have activity. We have a legitimate spirit legitimately turning on this device here. Whoa! We have activity. We have a legitimate spirit legitimately turning on this device here. Whoa! We have activity. We have a legitimate spirit legitimately turning on this device here. Whoa! We have activity. We have a legitimate spirit legitimately turning on this device here. Just because some guy built this in his garage, it doesn't mean it doesn't do what it's advertised to do. That device, you see, it detects electromagnetic static. And it happened to be concealed inside of that plexiglass cube. Why am I talking about non-ghostly things? Probably because it's a little freaky. It's a little freaky. It's legitimately a little bit freaky. That went off by itself. An intelligent entity set that thing off. It is now 12.45 a.m. So I have to say the entity didn't fully disappoint in the context of one thing happening, something happening. All three cameras got that. Not the best evidence you've ever seen in your life. Not the best evidence. But you know what? I'd say it's promising from the context of trying to get some evidence. It's promising in the fact that I didn't rig anything. It's 100% unrigged. Zero rigging took place. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you the disassembling process of me taking every single one of these objects, putting it in a case, but I'm going to show you the bottom of the stand that I built to show you it's just a regular stand. Matter of fact, I'm even going to lift up this cube and show you it's just a cube made out of wood. I think it's made out of particle board. So let's tell a few more scary stories that happen to be 100% true. So true that a spirit wants to listen in and hear this story. Let me just tell you why I told the, the demonic dream story real quick. I've kept that story to myself, not mentioning it for a month and a half straight. And I'll tell you why. Because the first time you tell a story, especially demonic related story, of an actual encounter, not some Halloween ghost story that's made up with a guy in a hook who scratches the window of the car. An actual legitimate story of a demonic entity pressing, pressing against my chest, inside and outside of the dream, pressing me against the wall a good 10, 15 feet. 
I mean, when I was being pushed against this entity in the dream, I was pushed a long way. It's almost as if the length of the room kept growing because the entity wanted to scare me as thoroughly as it could and uh, then press me against a wall. I never told that story until now because the first telling of one of these true stories greatly increases the chances of negative entities, demonic entities, evil spirits, if you will, showing up because they like to hear the retelling of these stories. In my opinion, that's just something I've observed and noticed. How can you notice something like that? Well, when the water cooler moves and shifts by itself and makes a large creaking sound, and you happen to be talking about a really scary demon encounter you've had, guess what is on top of that water cooler? Potentially an uh, invisible negative entity that actually enjoys the retelling of such stories. So the spirit has chosen to not set anything off other than that one time. I'm not going to ask it to uh, set anything off ever again or if it wants to. I mean, I can't force it and command it or tell it. That's one thing I've learned. Um, if you tick off an entity, just to sum it up really briefly, if you really tick off a spirit, uh, it can come back seven times stronger. And uh, that's probably the most crude way to put that out there. But uh, that's... I don't want to necessarily become best friends or best buds. Uh, no way, shape, or form. But even, let's say, an enemy, you can respect the boundaries and respect what they have to the point where there isn't, for example, Kim Jong-un. You can equate Kim Jong-un to a, a demon, most definitely. He's actually not that tough. probably don't want to tick him off. You probably don't want to make him mad. One truth I can tell you of the universe is there are positive good forces and there are negative okay it is setting it off again that is legitimate that right there is legitimate here is the time uh, if i could show the time here is the time 12:52 a.m. 12:52 a.m. There is a spirit present. One truth I can tell you of the universe is there are positive good forces and there are negative. Okay. It is setting it off again. That is legitimate. That right there is legitimate. Here is the time. Uh, if I could show the time. Here is the time, 12.52 a.m. 12.52 a.m. There is a spirit present. One truth I can tell you of the universe is there are positive good forces and there are negative... Okay. It is setting it off again. That is legitimate. That right there is legitimate. Here is the time. If I can show the time. Here is the time, 12.52 a.m. 12.52 a.m. There is a spirit present. One truth I can tell you of the universe is there are positive good forces and there are negative... Okay. It is setting it off again. That is legitimate. That right there is legitimate. Here is the time. If I could show the time. Here is the time, 12.52 a.m. 12.52 a.m. There is a spirit present. One truth I can tell you of the universe 
is there are positive good forces and there are negative okay it is setting it off again that is legitimate that right there is legitimate here is the time Here is the time, 12.52 a.m. 12.52 a.m. There is a spirit present. There is a spirit present. Not having full-blown full communication with it. Just acknowledging the existence of it. But i got to finish my sentence. There are evil negative forces and there are positive good forces in the universe forever. It's how the universe works, believe it or not. That's the most simplistic summary of how I can describe the universe. Yin and Yang. Now the yin and the yang symbol has a little bit of black in the white. And it has a little bit of white in the black. I disagree with that, personally. I think, sure, as a mortal, as a human mortal, you could definitely be a good person with a little bit of evil in you. Or you can definitely be an evil person with a little bit of good in you. So perhaps, as a way to describe humans, that could be accurate. But concerning the eternal aspect of eternity, I think there's most definitely a solid white and a most definitely a solid black. Not a speck of black in the white, not a speck of uh, white in the black. Now, perhaps I'm wrong. Perhaps there are spirits with a little bit of good in them. And perhaps they're on the bad side. And perhaps there are good spirits with a little bit of uh, black in the white. It's really hard to say. But as you can see, this pattern is black and white. Black and white is the theme, the design of the show, Mysterialis. And uh, I can say I do think it is very interesting that the spirit showed up at different particular times of me talking about random stuff. It didn't show up when I assumed he would talk about certain subjects. I could possibly talk about anything, but I'm going to give you my review right now of the Winchester Mystery House attraction, which is an authentic, very old house built by Sarah Winchester, the heiress of the Winchester fortune. Her husband developed the Winchester, the gun that won the West, they call it. You could shoot like six times without having to reload. And that was extremely useful in the West. Many people died. Thanks to the Winchester is what Sarah Winchester had on her mind. So she felt really guilty. She received a sum of money of $20 million. This is the true story. It's not the movie. I'm going to jump back and forth between the actual mansion and the movie Winchester. So she goes to a psychic on the East Coast, and she asks this psychic, what should she do? She has $20 million. It's tax-free. Most psychics would say, oh, give it to me. I'll get rid of your problems. But this psychic perhaps wasn't too dishonest, or perhaps they weren't dishonest at all. They just told her what they, as a psychic and a medium, felt was true. The afterlife does exist. It's real. But this experiment's going to go beyond 1 a.m. I was going to stop it at 1 a.m., but because of the success of the two independent occasions, the two occasions when that went off, I'm going to extend the experiment perhaps 30 minutes. We will see. As a matter of fact, these cameras are going to die. How about we extend the experiment 30 minutes or when the cameras die, whichever comes first. Sarah Winchester is told by the psychic, move out west and build a house. Build a house and dedicate it to the spirits who died from the Winchester rifle. So that's where Sarah Winchester got that crazy idea to build a house and dedicate it to people that died. Because she felt guilty. She clearly wasn't a gun person, yet her fortune was because of guns on one side of the family. She built this crazy house. Sarah Winchester clearly had some understanding of how spirits worked. But I can tell you this concerning the psychic's information to build a house for the spirits that died. It's false information. 100% false. That psychic was receiving false information from a negative entity, a demon, in my opinion, if they received any information. 
Maybe that psychic made up that information off the top of their head and they weren't psychic. They just rationalized some crazy scheme. I don't know. But if that information was given to a psychic, a psychic, a medium, the reason I, I'm not a big fan of psychics and mediums is a huge portion of them are receiving communication if they're not fake. A huge portion of them are fake. But the ones that are real, who actually receive information from ghosts, spirits, the receiving information from demons would be my guess. I guess I can't prove it, but that's my point of view. Because only a demon or an idiot making something up would say, move out west and spend your fortune building a mansion for the people that died. That makes no sense. But perhaps a demon gave that information to the psychic so they could set up some type of demonic house. That's what the Winchester Mystery House is. It's a freaking demonic house at this point. Sarah Winchester built doors that go nowhere. That's not demonic. That's just a little crazy. You open up the cabinet door and there's like this much space inside of it. You open up the door and there's this much space inside of it. It doesn't go anywhere. There's even a door that falls off the edge. And I saw that door that falls off the edge when I was a kid. So I've been to the Winchester Mystery House twice. And the first time I went there, I didn't notice anything. But the second time I went there for the Explore More tour, which has only been open since 2017. So it's a brand new tour. I recommend you check it out if you want to explore a little bit more. You're not exploring a lot more, just a little bit more. But it's still worthwhile because you get to see the room. Harry Houdini himself held a mock seance. I'm a huge fan of Harry Houdini. This is the only footage I was able to get of the witch's cap, the cone-shaped room where Harry Houdini conducted his mock seance at the Winchester Mystery House. It was very cool to visit. You can only see it during the Explore More tour. Harry Houdini was a great skeptic. He didn't believe in spirits. Uh, guess what, Harry Houdini? This device detected a legitimate spirit. 100% authentic, true information, not fake. I'm curious how it works. Is the spirit waving its spirit hand? I'll tell you this much. Spirits might look like an orb of light if you come across a rare enough encounter of being able to capture one. They can be an orb, but I'd say most orbs are just reflections of light. I'd say most orbs are either reflections of light or uh, moisture in the atmosphere but some orbs are real. I detected and recorded an actual orb when I was talking about demonic activity. So not, not a coincidence, my first ever filmed orb in the history of my YouTube lifetime happened to go across the screen when I'm talking about demonic activity. Not a coincidence. For the demonic all-seeing eye attention, anyway, the Winchester Mystery House is legitimately haunted. That's not too much of a groundbreaking revelation, but I detected that with my ability. I know for a fact it's haunted, despite the cliche of, oh, of course it's haunted. It's legitimately actually haunted. Oh, you're interested in this story, huh? Sorry, direct communication almost. But the Winchester Mystery House, that's authentic. That is 100% authentic. That is 100% authentic. I'm not doing it. It's real. I mean, if I were to break my rule and ask something, I'd say, can you touch one of those coins? Can you touch one of those coins? Would be my request. I'm not going to make any more requests. It breaks my own rules. And I apologize for even breaking that rule. So it's playing with the device. It's testing it out. Very interesting. Maybe it's waving its hand in front. I don't know how it works. I'm gonna move out of frame a little bit so you can see I'm not doing this. I'm way over here. I'm not even close to over there. 
and it stopped. Maybe it's waving its hand in front. I don't know how it works. I'm going to move out of frame a little bit so you can see I'm not doing this. I'm way over here. I'm not even close to over there. And it stopped. Maybe it's waving its hand in front. I don't know how it works. I'm going to move out of frame a little bit so you can see I'm not doing this. I'm way over here. I'm not even close to over there. And it stopped. Maybe it's waving its hand in front. I don't know how it works. I'm going to move out of frame a little bit so you can see I'm not doing this. I'm way over here. I'm not even close to over there. And it stopped. Maybe it's waving its hand in front. I don't know how it works. I'm going to move out of frame a little bit so you can see I'm not doing this. I'm way over here. I'm not even close to over there. And it stopped. But I was way out of frame and it's legitimate spirit communication activity. I guess it wasn't able to knock over one of the coins or doesn't want to. It can do whatever it wants concerning stuff like that. I'm not going to force it or command it or demand it to do anything. But the GoPro caught that information. This camera caught that. This caught that documentation on film of legitimate spirit activity. What was I talking about? Winchester Mystery House, how I know it is 100% haunted. Even though it's a cliche, I know it's haunted because about 15 steps into the barn entrance, they called it, I believe, the stable entrance of the house, that's the entrance they're going to show you or take you through during the mansion tour. The mansion tour is the standard tour they've been doing for many, many, many years. I'll draw just a basic example of where I went. I walked into the main stable entrance, didn't notice anything. They showed us a tiny closet door where Sarah Winchester had this tiny door custom made for her. The whole house is custom made to her specifications. Sarah Winchester was about four feet tall, very, very short woman. They opened up a door in this first room that went nowhere to show how crazy the house is. And then you see a hallway, which is pretty wide, and you see a carriage. And you can see this carriage on the TV show Ghost Adventures when they went there. So if I show any clips of inside of the house, it'll probably be clips from Ghost Adventures from that episode, just screenshots, because you are not allowed to bring a camera into the Winchester Mystery House. I vaguely remember that when I was a kid, I guess, I heard that, but I didn't own a camera back then. Anyway, I greatly wanted to get some evidence, but they do allow you to take photographs from the outside. So I walk in, see the carriage in this hallway, and then they take you into the house, and there's this entryway. It's really tiny. So every person has to go single file into this really tiny entryway. And the first step into this tiny entryway it had huge drawers, wooden drawers painted white on the left. These drawers, there were two drawers, just that's it, two. They were tall, they were, they were, they were fairly tall and they're huge. They were so huge, I made the assumption maybe that's where they held the horse saddles. Because each of these drawers could easily hold multiple horse saddles, probably very huge like horse saddle drawers anyway the first step which is the right step i put my right foot down on i felt like my foot almost went in like some water or some jello it was very oh, weird so i felt like a reverberation of evil and negative and creepy vibe like i just stepped through a ghost and speaking of stepping through ghosts using the term ghost generically, spirits often walk through me. 
Spirits will walk through me. And guess what? Spirits walk through you too. Very freaky thing, huh? Isn't that freaky? The thing is, you don't have the ability to detect and even know a spirit walked through you. So you're lucky. Consider yourself lucky if you don't have that gift. Because I know when a spirit walks through me, and sometimes it's greatly uncomfortable. Sometimes like it ca catches me off guard. I'm so used to it at this point. It's happened to me thousands and thousands, hundreds and hundreds of times. But when I stepped in this room, I felt just the whole room was creepy. And it's a very tiny room. So that was my first sense. This place is haunted. This room is haunted. The tiny entryway is haunted. So a demonic entity was either sitting on those giant shelves to the left or standing in the middle, allowing people to walk through it, perhaps to detect every single tourist that walked into the Winchester Mystery House. More specifically, I have concluded that it was definitely an intelligent entity and it standing there waiting to inspect every single tourist, single file, one by one, shows how intelligent the entity was. Because that's the most logical place for an entity that wanted people to walk through it. When you walk through a spirit, I think you can judge perhaps what kind of person you are little characters, characteristics, perhaps how I sense a spirit. When a spirit walks through me, I can detect little things, tiny subtle things. Perhaps the negative spirit, and I know it's negative because it felt pure creepy. Creepy equals negative, negative equals evil spirit. Perhaps there's varying degrees. In Buddhist lore, there's a vision of uh, black-robed entities on the bottom of this particular painting. It's a Buddhist painting, and I've been trying to find it for over a year at this point, probably two years. I thought it was a beautiful painting. It showed gray-robed entities at the, in the middle, white-robed entities at the top, and black-robed entities, and then all different shades, different gray shades in between. Obviously, light to dark. I think it was portraying the different bardo realms. So in Buddhism, at least some Buddhist beliefs, and there are different groups, there are different types of Buddhists, but in some Buddhist beliefs, negative goes to the bottom, top, uh, positive goes to the top, neutral is in the middle, there's many different degrees. I could tell you one thing. I know for a fact this actually happened and it's actually real. I know for a fact that was a spirit, 100% guarantee. It's authentic, it's real. People aren't gonna call me crazy. That's definitely not the case. People most definitely are still gonna call me crazy. But this actually happened, it's real. Now, to the ghost hunters out there, this is my room. This is my bedroom. My bed is over there, all right? So it's pretty risky for me to do it because I don't want encounters while I'm trying to sleep. And if I do have any freaky demonic dreams while I'm trying to sleep, I will inform you and talk about it. Oh. Ah. The GoPro has died. <laughs> the GoPro has died. It was so loud, all right? It was so loud that uh, it is right now it is 1.15 a.m. So you can see how long the GoPro lasted. A little bit shorter. Oh, it's shorter because I had it on 4K. I wanted to make sure the GoPro was on 4K, the top highest resolution. So it was only able to last one hour and 15 minutes. That's actually not bad considering I recorded in 4K. I thought that sound was the spirit interested in a story I was talking about, about demonic dreams or something like that, but uh, 
Oh yeah, I don't want to have any creepy, crazy dreams. If I do, I'm going to give you a full documentation of what's going on in my life, of what happened. Uh, this experiment's going longer because there was success. The spirit actually set off the electromagnetic proximity detector. It detects the proximity of an entity that chooses to manipulate the uh, device. And I think it's interesting that the one device it set off is the device inside of the plexiglass cube. So how am I supposed to manipulate that? How am I supposed to generate? I guarantee there's no electromagnetic generation device that I've built over there. That's definitely, most definitely not the case. When I disassemble this, you will see how I built it, what I used. <sighs> so I'm taking a risk. But as far as other ghost hunters out there, they go to a house, they seek out a house, they go to the Winchester Mystery House, and they're looking for that ghost, and they're using every device they got. Similar devices, if not the exact same devices I have over here. The thing about spirits is you don't need to go far. Spirits are all over the place. They're everywhere, okay? You can't go where a spirit is not. I, I don't mean to sound arrogant. I don't mean to sound rude. But let's face it, ghost hunters. You don't know what you're doing. You're amateurs. You're going out and pretending and you're finding fake evidence or you're faking evidence because you can't find squat. When my first try my very first try, and sure, I wouldn't be bragging if I got nothing. If I got nothing, I would have said, ah, dang it. Well, at least I'm safe from entities that want to communicate with me, right? But in this case, I can say on my very, 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 very first try, I purchased these devices individually, and I know two of them turned off, but it's not a big deal. We still have one, two, three, four. Winchester Mystery House. Let's see if we can get through this. It's haunted. They talked about the wheelbarrow man in the basement. So I greatly anticipated seeing this wheelbarrow man. Man, I want to see this ghost. Yeah. Apparently, okay, the tour guide, who was really good at his job, he told us so much that I think he went a little bit over time. He said the closest he came to seeing a ghost, and I can't verify I've ever seen a ghost, but I have seen shadow people in the corner of my eyes a few such a rare amount of time we're talking maybe three times very rare and sure your mind can play tricks on you but can your mind set off a device which is designed to detect electromagnetic static electricity being manipulated from a distance i can't manipulate static electricity from a distance folks it's 100 percent legit it's 100 percent real I mean, to make it sound more promo friendly, because I might put this in a promo. Ghosts are real. Ghosts exist. Ghosts can set off and manipulate a device designed to detect the proximity of ghosts using static electricity. And the manipulation of static electricity. At least we found the one device that works. Now, it doesn't mean the other devices don't work. It just means perhaps that one works the best. Or perhaps it means that one is the most sensitive. Or perhaps it means that's the one it chose to play with. It's hard to say. Okay, Winchester Mystery House. A woman on the tour. The lady says she never heard this story in her life. She happens to be straggling behind, which is easy to do because the rooms wind and they're very twisty. If you're not at the front, you can miss half of what the tour guide says. But she kind of straggled behind the tour, maybe only a few feet, whatever the case may be. In the basement, she was on the Explore More tour. That's how I know it's less than a year old of a story because they've only opened up the basement to the public for the Explore More tour since last summer, 2017. This woman saw in the corner of the room, of all things, the corner. Now, it's an area where coal is clearly dumped from a higher location. And coal is dumped into this coal collecting corner. And there are other corners, but it is legitimately a corner. It's just not the typical corner because it's designed to hold coal and to 
shovel coal out of. And the coal will be shoveled and put in the furnace, which is over here. She saw a man pushing a small wheelbarrow, a coal barrel, from the coal corner in the direction of the furnace. She said he was wearing a white jumpsuit and a black hat. And he wasn't transparent. He was just a regular guy in the dark pushing a coal cart. So at the end of the tour, which probably isn't too many minutes past where she saw this guy pushing a coal cart, the guy said, any questions? And he said, he asked that he, uh, he said the same thing on my tour. And the lady said, oh yeah, well, well I like the reenactors you have. Uh, and he's like, what reenactors? And she said, oh, the guy in the basement pushing the coal cart. It's pretty cool, the reenactor. And he said, we don't have reenactors. And he ran to the basement as fast as he could. And there was no one there. This guy has been witnessed multiple times. On the TV show, Ghost Adventures. The second time they went to the Winchester Mystery House, they claim they filmed the wheelbarrow man, but the footage is so hard to see that I don't even know if it's real. I'll tell you why. The head guy, he's like, take a look. He's like, come here and look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Look, 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 look. Get the camera guy, get the camera. And the camera guy is just staring at him for like a minute straight while he's doing this. They gonna need to work on their cues if that was the cameraman's fault because the cameraman would just staring at the guy saying, look at, look at this, to the point where by the time the camera guy gets there, there's like nothing. Could have been staged, could have been fake. But I think if any of the evidence on the entire Winchester Mystery House, the second time they went back, Ghost Adventures episode is authentic, it's when they were shining flashlights at the carriage right next to the room that I know is legitimately haunted where the demon hangs out watching every single tourist enter the tour, probably wondering, hmm, who should I haunt? Which one of these people would make a good candidate to appear to or haunt? And perhaps the lady that saw the wheelbarrow man ghost, perhaps she was in a certain state of mind, like a trance-like state. The restaurant and gift shop, they do serve wine and beer. Perhaps she had a few before. Not to say she was drunk, because she witnessed something other people have witnessed. So it's corroborating evidence. She actually saw what other people saw, proving something is there, something's happening. I think the demon hangs out at that entryway, and on Ghost Adventures, it sounds like poltergeist activity takes place. They're looking at the wagon, and they hear a ruckus. They hear a moving. It sounds like a door closing. It could be something banging against the drawers in what I know to be the haunted entryway. But they don't know that that entryway is haunted. So they looked around and they didn't know. But he was close enough to the haunted room where I think that activity might have come from the haunted room. But it's just so close of me knowing that's the haunted area and them having, hearing something. A lot of shows they are going to make stuff up and stage stuff. But to stage something right next to the room, I know for a fact I detect it as being haunted. It's too much of a coincidence. I think they did catch something. So I'm, I'm going to be closing up experiment number one. If I talked over the spirit setting off the device, if I talked over it, uh, I didn't mean to, you know. Uh, 128 a.m. I'm going to end the experiment right now. The movie is fiction mixed with truth, mostly fiction. The one true thing in the movie, Winchester, and it's a jump scare movie. There's a scary scene next to the stairway that leads nowhere. Anything that leads nowhere and does nothing and makes no sense was specifically built by Sarah Winchester for the spirits. Her, perceptive, her perception of how spirits observe our dimension is interesting and she perhaps wasn't fully wrong. Maybe she used it to trick the spirits. I heard that she slept in different rooms so she could hide from the spirits. 
I don't know if that's true, but it's possible. The spirit that uh, set that device off, I know for a fact it likes this corner of the room. It's the reason why I built this entire set to show that the spirit does like this corner of the room. Mysterialis, this show is focusing on the 100% truth. I'm gonna be reenacting some ghost hunting experiments aside from this one, but this most definitely is the main experiment and there are going to be 10 of these experiments. One of them is gonna be a live stream. Don't hunt for ghosts, I don't recommend it. In my opinion, nine times out of 10, a ghost is gonna be a demon and not the spirit of a dead human. Just my opinion, I can't prove it because it's invisible, all right? But I can feel negative vibes, demon. I can feel positive vibes, perhaps an angel. I could feel neutral vibes, perhaps a, perhaps it's a human, but I know for a fact that um, many spirits are neutral and feel neutral. So just because a spirit feels neutral doesn't even mean it's neutral. Perhaps it's disguising its positive or negative aspect. Um, invisible entities are real. Because of that, perhaps a few people will believe my words. If you were harassed by a poltergeist entity that knocked all objects in your room over for five and a half months every single day, over 150 days straight, you probably wouldn't make a YouTube channel and talk about it as excessively as I have. That's true. You would probably bottle it up like a lot of humans do things that are real but i i did bottle it up a couple years i'm the hoax hunter youtube.com slash hoax hunter and uh, people know me as being a skeptic really busting people that fake i guarantee you there's one thing i'd rather die than do is fake evidence this is real it's not happening right this exact second but I'd rather be dead than slump to the low level of a hoaxer that fakes evidence, that creates fake things. But when you're doing the real thing, you know, I'm feeling a creepy vibe right now. I don't know if it's just simply the topic, the subject, but the movie, Winchester. Okay, it's true. Just talking about a subject can creep you out. The movie, Winchester, the one scene that the guy, the tour guide didn't even admit was real, but it's fairly close to real a character the main character if you will next to sarah winchester he looks through the peephole and he sees sarah winchester in a trance she's like all tranced out she's sketching with her eyes closed that's what's going on sarah winchester sketching with her eyes closed she's in a trance-like state i mean you've heard of automatic writing right but automatic floor plan layout for a house and a room and doing the blueprints. I've never heard of automatic blueprint designing. Perhaps some people have done that. Now, Sarah Winchester apparently did do something like that. She held seances and we walked through the seance room. I walked through it and the seance room on the TV show Ghost Adventures, they picked up so many loud either EVPs or direct voices from spirits. I don't know if it was real or fake. They were too clear. Now, as far as EVPs, I will check anything on this mic. I will check anything on these two mics and that mic. I know for a fact the spirit set off that device. Let's just run these. Oh, I was gonna disassemble it. Okay, well, it's 1.35 a.m. I'm gonna run the experiment until 1.40 a.m. And most definitely, I am going to edit parts out. This is documentation of a historical event to a certain extent. Ghost experiment number one on March 4th. Sunday, March 4th, 2018. It is 1.36 a.m. I'm going to stop the experiment at 1.40 a.m to the point where I'm gonna disassemble and turn off everything at 1.40 a.m. And I purposely never turned these on until this very filming. 
So I've, hold, I've held on to some of these devices for already a couple months now. I first turned them on for this experiment. Okay, here we go. This is authentic spirit activity. It's authentic. I first turned them on for this experiment. Okay, here we go. This is authentic spirit activity. It's authentic. At approximately 1.45 a.m., the spirit set off the device for the fourth and final time. Right as I was talking about the devices were never even touched and turned on and used except for testing purposes for a few seconds other than during the final first experiment because I didn't want the spirit to play with the devices prior to the experiment taking place and being filmed. It was a success. The spirit activated some internal feature as it left where it went off in a loop. I didn't know what was going on so it went off for about an hour, an hour and a half, I walked off into the desert because I was freaked out. I didn't know what was going on. Here I am as I got back around 3 a.m., 3.10 a.m. I'm testing the device, seeing what happened. I even gave the spirit an opportunity to turn it off. But the spirit had no desire, perhaps was long gone by this point. I'm showing the full process sped up because it's a very long and monotonous process. All the coins, all the items were the exact same spot. I'm taking everything down, disassembling everything to be as transparent as possible, show you exactly what happened. Testing the devices, they all work. I take the battery out of that device and put it in this one to see if the battery was defective. It was not. Both batteries worked perfectly fine. The device still works perfectly fine. A spirit activated an internal loop. I have that over our worth of footage of the loop. You saw some of the sped up footage of the loop. I'm sure you don't want to see that. But this device works. I'm going to continue to focus on this device. And I'm going to have more experiments in the future. I'm just I just talk about the differences between the devices. But I wanted to show you the underside of this stand that I built out of plastic and duct tape and glue to show you there's nothing there. There are no secret features. That second piece of plastic I built at the last second to hold up this plastic cube because it was leaning over a little bit. And here is the box I lifted up. There's nothing inside. It's made out of particle board. No tricks, no gimmicks. I'm a 100% honest investigator. The pursuit of science and truth and exploring the unknown, the paranormal, is something I will continue to do. This is the corner of my room experiment. Corners of rooms is a phenomenon where ghosts, specifically a certain type of spirit, in my opinion, focuses and appears and enters the room in the corner of the room. Why do they like and focus on the corner of the room so much? It involves their dimension and how they see our dimension would be my theory. So I set up these devices, two of which automatically turned off because it's been two hours at this point. I set up these four aluminum coins to be knocked over by any poltergeist type activity. I set up the foam pyramid for the same reason. Earlier, it was making different noises, meaning touching different sides of this antenna. The antenna detects the electromagnetic static electricity or it's static electricity is what it is 
But when you hear a variation, that's one, in my opinion, it's not perfectly repeating it. This is authentic evidence of a spirit. This is my Corners of Rome's ghost experiment. It was successful. A little bit too successful near the end. Whew. John Rasmus here. Why am I in the middle of some random stop in the middle of the night, like almost 3 a.m. probably? Because my ghost detecting device wouldn't turn off. I kept going and going. I'm trying to test another theory. I have two cameras running, although one of them's probably dead right now. And the other one might be full of memory, but I'm testing a theory. I've walked a good distance from my house, leaving the cameras and equipment on to test a theory. And because it is a little bit freaky, my stomach feels a little weird. Um, conducting a legitimate ghost hunting experiment where you're not faking any of the evidence, it's all real. You know it's real and the spirits know it's real, is the difference. I don't think ghost hunters, and it might get dark because I'm going in circles, I don't think ghost hunters take it seriously. And when they don't take it seriously, what happens is nothing happens. They got a fake evidence for a TV show, they got ratings they got to worry about and getting canceled and whatever. I don't care about any of that. Matter of fact, ghost hunting is not my thing. I'm not a ghost hunting channel. Trust me, this will not turn into a permanent ghost hunting channel. This is a very limited experience, experience experiment that will last for 10, 10 experiments. I'm going to do one, maybe two, maybe even three live streams. Why? Because the spirit was that active tonight. I mean, I expected something. I was actually pretty confident something would happen, but you can't really gauge because as much as you hope something's going to happen, you also expect for the worst. But something actually happened. The ghost set off, the spirit set off um, at least two meters. I noticed, obviously, the static electricity meter went off the charts. <laughs> it only went off during certain times, but I guess I can check to see what I was talking about. Matter of fact, I was talking about random stuff, usually. Lucite type, um, plexiglass type plastic over the biggest device, which happens to be the one that got set off tonight, many times. So much that it was still going when I left my house. I'm probably a good mile away from my house right now not that i'm scared I'm, I'm testing a theory but sure it was a little queasy want to maybe get rid of that negative energy try to focus on positive things because it definitely felt negative in there not positive the device was still going off even after i ended the experiment thank you for watching it's a true story this is all real it's not fake it's pretty freaky i don't recommend it i don't condone even pretending to talk to spirits, let alone doing what I just did and actually <sighs> communicated uh, to a certain extent. I tried to be vague and not really exactly talking to it, but even having one of these devices on and filming it is akin to welcoming it. So I can't you know, blame it for basically doing what I was asking and um, it did turn on the devices uh, I'm not crazy it's real it's authentic it's, it's actually it actually happened um, experiment 10 one two through ten are still gonna take place I'm gonna live stream only because of the success of tonight I was hesitant about live streaming but then again not maybe nothing will happen during the live stream we will see I thank you for watching. This has been John Rasmus. Be seeing you. 24 hours after this experiment, at 12 a.m. on March 5th, the next day, a spirit entered my room. 
It walked through me as I was about to go to bed. It was an evil spirit. I could feel negative vibes throughout my whole body. This actually happened. Because of this, I feel the strong need to warn anyone attempting to conduct ghost detecting experiments. Negative spirits can and will follow you home. And I'll even emphasize on top of that, if you conduct an experiment in your own house, let alone your own bedroom like I have done, it's a dangerous environment. I greatly do not recommend it. This negative spirit left such a strong impression on me, I couldn't not talk about it during experiment number two. Here is a segment of that experiment. Because of the success of the proximity detector, it's the only device I brought with me during experiment number two. I thank you for watching. This has been John Rasmus with Mysterialis. Not everything happens on cue, and it's proof that I'm not in control of the experiments. They're completely out of my control, which is why it's scary, which is why it's the unknown, which is why I do not recommend it. Why am I doing it? I thought it'd be fun and games to buy ghost hunting equipment and hunt for ghosts. It's not fun and games. It's very scary. It, it brings in negative vibes. It brings in negative spirits. That's what I noticed 24 hours after the first experiment. I felt extreme negative vibes. That's the best way I can describe it to people that don't have the ability. I felt extreme negative vibes coming out of nowhere. 24 hours after the experiment, almost on the dot. We're talking 12 a.m. Exactly 24 hours after the first experiment. A negative entity walked through me, or if you don't believe in that, extreme negative vibes went through my whole body. That's what it felt like. I know what it was. Turning off the camera. Till next time, I thank you for watching. This has been John Rasmus with Mysterialis. Be seeing you. This camera in particular, I have noticed knocks and touches on the mic so close that, he, that I know it's something touching the mic. It's not a defective mic, it's a brand new camera. And I know what the touching of a mic sounds like. For example, let me give you an example of touching of the mic. I'm going to be touching the mic real quick. Whoa! We have activity! One truth I can tell you of the universe is there are positive good forces and there are negative... Okay. It is setting it off again. It's legitimately actually haunted. The first contact was at 12.42 a.m. The second contact was at 12.51 a.m. And the third contact was at 1.02 a.m. Almost exactly 10 minutes apart, proving intelligence. I first turned them on for this experiment. Okay, here we go. This is authentic spirit activity. The beginning of the experiment, 12 a.m., to 12.42 a.m., the first contact was exactly 42 minutes. We know about the 10-10-10 in between, proving intelligence, but I just found this out from the second to last contact to the last contact, which is the end of the experiment, was exactly 43 minutes, further proving even more intelligence. Basically, this entity is a math whiz it knew that I wasn't going to allow it yes or no questions, so it attempted to communicate using math. I happen to not be a fan of math, and it took me many hours even to notice this pattern. This is most definitely proof of intelligent contact. I did not in any way, shape, or form set the device off. It was set off by an intelligent entity. On top of that, the increments in which this device went off impossibly could not have been done with any type of natural static electricity buildup. That is literally an impossible feat, proving it was a spirit, an intelligent spirit, 
that set off the device at specific increments of time. Further analysis of the contacts. This is the first contact. If you pay really close, look at my eyes. Notice my eyes. I didn't know this was going to happen. You can see me have a thought process in my head. I think to myself, crap, there's actually a spirit here. This is pretty freaky. Take a close look at those eyes. They are having a thought before they turn. It's pretty scary stuff. If anything, this should scare you straight to never buy or use ghost hunting equipment. It works. Whoa! We have activity. We have a legitimate spirit legitimately turning on this device here. This actually went off. It actually worked. I purchased these because that device worked. I wouldn't have gone out of my way to purchase these if it didn't work. This is my most recent purchase. It's a much more professional device. Has the geophone tremor detector on the bottom. Has the EMF sensor right here. It has a temperature sensor right here. Since I just turned it on, it's calibrating but it is apparently 68.6 .6 degrees right now and I will be using a few more pieces of equipment that are a little bit more professional than what I have right now but there's going to be a time when I stop buying ghost hunting equipment because something like this tells the spirits that you're ready and open this is like a digital Ouija board I know ghosts likely do have the ability to manipulate a lot of these different sensors the mysterious the unknown this universe is full of many things we do not understand. It's my goal to focus on the truth, seek the truth, find the truth, if possible. But we can only find a fraction. One thing I do know is spirits are real. Demons are real. Angels and positive spirits are real as well. The Loch Ness Monster, perhaps it's a spirit. Gnomes, fairies, most likely spirits. Bigfoot has many attributes of a spirit. I will continue to investigate. I thank you for watching. This has been John Rasmus with Mysterialis. Be seeing you.